It is SummerSlam week as we get ready for one of the WWE's big events of the year and the first major event since WrestleMania. So where are we at? Um, I think the WWE is building at a really good time. I think that they used the first couple of months post-WrestleMania to be like, look, A, we know there's probably going to be a lull anyway, but B, we are going to some amazing crowds. We have a guy who is red hot as our champion. And so we can afford to maybe play around with a few things. And so they have, I think, built up Gunther tremendously. I think they have really built things up with um, with Damian Priest. All right, that one hasn't been perfect, but it's been fine. Um, they have really invested in this Bloodline 2.0 with, uh, with Solo Sokoa and, and all of that. They have used these last few months to build up, and now a lot of it is crescendoing here at, at, at SummerSlam. Um, Priest versus Gunther, I thought they heated that one up really, really quickly, and for one that kind of felt like, well, this is like a mandatory challenge in boxing, they have built it now into a really, really compelling story, and one where... I am not so sure Priest is losing here at SummerSlam. I thought Gunther, when he won King of the Ring, there is no question he wins at SummerSlam. But I do wonder if Priest gets this win, just given how hard, you know, it's Booker T, Triple H, maybe not to the full extent of everything that was going on there, but with the homelessness as a choice angle that Gunther took on, on Raw a couple of weeks ago, that's a pretty thing, shitty thing to have your guy say and then beat the guy after. I wonder if Priest wins here and then Gunther gets his rematch at uh, Berlin um, and they are able to, to get that one there and it just feels like maybe a bit of a bigger deal and a bigger coronation for, for, for Gunther. But they have done a great job of building up some doubt in this one. And same thing goes for the, the, the Women's World Championship as well with uh, Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan. SummerSlam feels like the first big moment of this feud. Not the culmination, this feels like the end of act one. And that makes it really exciting. Cause I feel like there are some real legs that they have with this story. And again, that makes it really, really fun for me. When when, when you have like a few twists and turns that are coming this weekend, I, I have it written down here. This is going to feel more like an Attitude Era match than it is uh, a current one. Like, I, I don't think we're going to get 35 minutes bell to bell of just fast paced action. We're going to get some, because I think these two are going to have a really good show in the ring. But I, I, I wonder, like, what's Finn's involvement in all of this? Is Dom really on Rhea Ripley's side? I think this is kind of the, the real big blow that kind of fractures Judgment Day up uh, a, a little bit more here. And so that, I'm just, I am so interested to see how this one happens. This one's probably the one that I am most intrigued to see the overall story around all of it heading into, or coming out of Saturday. Um, but I, and it's another one where you just kind of thought, yeah, Rhea comes back, she wins the title, and she continues on her reign of dominance. I don't know. Like, Liv has found her character, and she has been exceptional at it. And I think that, like, it just, like I said, it feels like the end of Act 1 and something they can really build on into the future. Um, and, like, same with Solo and Cody. Maybe not necessarily Act 1, but this feels like it'll be a bit more Attitude Era-ish. And I do think that, like, a lot of people are anticipating Roman's coming back. I would anticipate that as well. And that that kind of leads into the start of this whole big Bloodline Civil War Part 2 sort of a sort of a thing. Um, but I, I think the last few weeks have done a really good job of making the bloodline feel unbeatable again. Like I said earlier, I would have liked to have seen more in-ring dominance, have Solo go out there and just kick the shit out of random jobber X, like just beat Baron Corbin every week. Um, have him go out there and do that. Um while also doing the table stuff at the end and all of that. But still, they, they've built him up. No one's believing that Solo's going to win the uh, Undisputed Universal Champion or whatever it's called now, the, the WWE Championship. But I, I think it is setting up for a real interesting part that is next here. Um, other things that are going on, Punk against Drew McIntyre. It finally gets into the ring. I'm excited for this one as well. The Seth Rollins involvement intrigues me a little bit. It does feel like it is a bit of an extra piece and also a bit of a waste of Seth Rollins in this particular role. Um, it does feel a little bit like Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus a year ago, where, like, this is a big show 
one of your big stars should have a bigger role on your big show. Um, but the, the main hope is just everyone stays healthy coming out of this because these three could just do this dance basically up until the Royal Rumble. Um, and then lastly, Braun Breaker, I think his time is now. Um, I, I think A, it does kind of help spin off Sammy with Jey Uso into whatever Roman Reigns thing is next. Um, and, and I think that is rather helpful, actually. Um, and I, I think it is now time for Braun Breaker to take that next step. We have we have passed this level. It is now time for him to be the ass-kicking champion. And we will see that coming up on Saturday, I do believe. 